And thanks everyone for coming out to my talk for your final presentation at Python Europe, uh, EuroPython. Um, so this is sight unseen, but hopefully by the end of it, uh, it won't be so hidden. Um, Python is a very customizable language. I think we all know this. Um, it allows us to do all kinds of things. Uh, it gives us the power to monkey patch, uh, change the interpreter as it's running. Um, and there's a lot of customization that can be done. Sometimes the customization is hidden from us, like when we use decorators or context, context managers. Uh, what actually happens isn't immediately obvious from reading the screen. And it seems almost magical, but it's not really magical. It's just that the complexity has been shifted somewhere else. Um, and the same thing happens with the interpreter startup. We also have power to change how Python starts up. Uh, but a lot of it's done out of sight. Um, and so it's not really magical. It's just that it's happening somewhere where you don't see it. But if you know where to look, it's not so magical and hopefully not so complex. Uh, the customization of Python as it starts up is done by a module called Site. Uh, it's part of the standard library. And when you import Site, it does these things. It extends your module search path, that is sys.path. Uh, enables some interactive features for when you're going to use the interactive Python shell. And it also executes further user customizations, basically letting you run arbitrary code to further customize Python. So if you import site, you get all these features. Um, and I'm sure all of you have benefited from them happening at some point, probably almost every time you're in Python. But I don't know how many people out there have actually run the statement import site. This is because the interpreter does it for you. When it starts up before you get to your main script, uh, it's already decided to go ahead and import site for you because really it's what you want to happen. Now, Python still gives us the power. So if we really don't want it, we can turn it off with an option on the command line. Or if we decide later we really do want it turned on, we can still be explicit. We don't have to let Python do it behind the scenes. Uh, but site is not just a module you can import, it's also one you can't execute. So if you run it as an executable module on the command line, uh, it'll print out some diagnostics that can really help you when you're debugging tricky, especially import issues. If we run site on the command line, it prints out something pretty much just like this. Uh, it shows us our entire sys.path as it will appear just as we enter our main script, and also gives us some detailed information about user site, which we'll get back to in a little bit. If we tell Python again to execute site, but we pass the dash s option, which means don't import site for me magically, it still works. This is kind of confusing. Site's being executed, but we told Python not to import site. But it turns out it's actually smart enough to work. Uh, and it just works. So we can still debug path problems, even when we don't want to have the implicit import site. And just to prove to you that you don't have to use magic, uh, if we tell Python not to import site for us, but we do it ourselves, um, we get the same result as the first time. So the first job of site is to extend the module search path. Um, I think everyone probably knows how to extend search path using the environment variable Python path. Uh, probably everyone out there has set Python path in anger at some point because Python just couldn't find the thing that you knew where it was. Um, I know I do this often, although I try not to. Um, putting Python path into sys.path list is not the job of site, uh, but every other addition to sys.path pretty much comes from site. So we have other ways of extending the search path. Um, specifically, the site will add directories called site packages. You might know this name if you've ever been curious where pip put th puts things that you actually install. They all go into a directory called site packages that sits alongside the rest of the standard library. So wherever you have your OS and your path lib, there's also a directory called site packages, but it doesn't have a dunder init file in it, so it's not importable, but somehow everything inside of it can still be imported. Uh, this is because site goes and finds it and adds it to your sys.path. 
So otherwise you couldn't import any of those third-party modules. Uh, next path also, or site, excuse me, also adds user site packages, which is a different kind of site packages. It's still site packages, but it's located under your user home directory instead of relative to the install location of Python. Uh, and this is can be very useful because you always have write permissions under your home directory, and you might not where Python's installed on your system. So if you've ever tried to pip install something and got hit in the face with a big error that you eventually figured out was because you don't have write permissions to wherever Python is on your system, um, the answer to solving this issue is not to sudo pip install your package. Uh, it is to use the pip flag dash dash user, which will tell pip you want it installed in the other site packages, the one that you have write permissions to. Um, you might be using this and not even know it because for the last couple of years, pip has released versions that will automatically fall back to the user site um, if there are encounters permission issues. But site's not done yet. Uh, it also adds virtual env. So there's also site packages in your virtual env. Uh, I love virtual env. I hope everyone out there uses them. Um, but you spend all that time and effort isolating your dependencies from all the other environments and your base Python. Um, but if that site packages doesn't make it onto your sys.path, that's kind of it's all for naught. Even if you run Python from an activated state, if you have an imported site, you don't get to use any of those packages that are in the virtual environment. So you kind of still really need site. Uh, and finally, uh, path will read and execute path files. What are path files? They are any file that site found as it was adding these other site packages that ends in a .pth. For every one of these files it finds, it'll read it and uh, these files can contain two types of lines. They can contain a line that is a path anywhere local on your system, and it will be added also to sys.path, so it can be anywhere. Or it can contain import statements, uh, in which case site will execute those import statements. And so this provides a mechanism for third-party modules that are in site packages to participate in the customization of the Python startup that site's doing, because site is also extending your path and it's also being imported for you kind of implicitly. Um, path is a pretty advanced feature, and if you don't know that you need it, you probably don't need it. But what could we do with it? Um, well, it's for modules that really need to set themselves up before you get to your first line of code. So if you want code coverage, you probably want code coverage from your first line to your last line. And that's pretty tricky to do if you have to first import something and do some set boilerplate setup. So if you were perhaps creating a new coverage library, you could drop this path into your site packages, uh, which would add your source code to the sys.path, letting you import it as sort of an editable install. And you could import the setup so that your code coverage tool could cover its own code. So here's that uh, command that we ran earlier. I've just added comments to show where each directory is coming from. So the first entry on sys.path is the directory you launched Python from. That's always first. Then comes Python path uh, if it's set. It could be, contain multiple things. And then your standard library. Uh, so these things are all set even before we get to site. Um, but the last four are all set by site. So about half of our search paths are dynamically added, at least in this case. Could be more or less. Uh, so we've added a virtual end site packages, uh, a sort of random path from a path file, uh, my user site packages, and the base system Python, the one that created the virtual environment, is last on the list. So it's sites done adding or inflating your sys.path. Uh, now it goes on to enable some interactive features. So 
this is when you're going to enter the Python interactive shell. Uh, a lot of what makes it nice to work with is because of site. So it will import and configure the relay module, which is another standard library that comes with Python. And it's really just a thin wrapper around the C reline uh, library, which is a line editing library. So it's used by a lot of different languages that have interactive shells, uh, including bash. And it gives you things like tab completion in your Python REPL, uh, command history, which lets you do things like up arrow or reverse search your commands. When you close the Python interpreter and reopen it, uh, your old commands are still there because they were saved in a history file, which is from readline. And you'll really know that you launched an interpreter that didn't configure readline properly if you've ever gone and made a simple spelling mistake and tried to use your arrow keys to get back and fix it and instead just filled your buffer with garbage, eventually figured out you need to clear your whole line and start over. And for multi-line statements in Python, this means you have to clear the whole thing and start from the first line again. So it's really nice having a readline set up for you. The other thing that site will do for interactive is uh, it'll create new built-ins. So I said at the beginning that we can monkey patch things in Python. We can monkey patch built-ins. Uh, and in fact, site does this. It monkey patches new built-ins every time you launch Python. So it adds a couple, uh, including the help function and the exit function that you use. So these don't exist unless you have imported site somehow. So if you had a script and you use the global exit function, this would work. Python would execute and exit cleanly. But if you happen to run the same script again without the implicit import of site, you get a name error because uh, it's not actually defined in the built-ins class. It's put there by site. So for scripts, just always use sys.exit. But for the interactive shell, it's actually really nice to not have to do an import of sys just to leave the interactive shell. So next is user customizations. These are hooks that site provides for other code to participate in the uh, customization of the startup. So, so far everything's been kind of prescriptive, but here uh, site is gonna give us some opportunities to just run arbitrary Python code before we get to our main script. Uh, the first way we can do this is through a module called site customize. So after site has inflated the full sys.path, path, it will then attempt an import of site customize. So if this is a module that exists in one of those directories, it will be loaded. And because it's loaded, all its global statements will be executed. So whatever it does affects Python. Uh, it's designed to be for system administrators or whoever was the person who installed Python on that machine so that they can uh, make it work better for the machine or for the users, whatever they need to do to administer the Python. So if there was a really curious system administrator that really wanted to know every error that was happening, they could use this site customized to set up a logging handler where they got emailed every time anyone logged an error or above on any Python process. Probably be very chatty, but they'd certainly know what was going on. Uh, the next opportunity to extend what site does is user customize, which is essentially the same thing as an, an attempted import that's done after sys.path is fully inflated. Uh, but this is by the name designed for the user, the person who's launching Python to add custom code. So this is really the opportunity for you to add whatever you want, change Python, to behave differently so that it suits you better. Um, and really the sky's the limit because it's Python code, but what's one thing you could do? Well, if you maybe like pretty tracebacks, uh, we have some pretty great ones in 3.11 and better ones coming in 3.12, but maybe you're on an older version of Python, or maybe you really want colors in your tracebacks and we still don't have that in the core. Um, if you had this as a user customize, then any Python you ran, uh, if it ever crashed, 
will give you a pretty trace back, even though you didn't necessarily put this import in every script and every library that you used. Uh, the final opportunity for us to insert some extra customization is the Python startup, which is an environment variable that can point to any file on your system. Um, so unlike the first two that are attempted imports, this one can be anywhere. It doesn't have to end up on sys.path. Um, if it exists, it is exact, not imported, um, but only if you're about to enter the interactive interpreter. Uh, so that's important in a couple reasons. One is that we can customize Python in a way that's maybe slow uh, or not useful in every situation because site customize and user customize are gonna happen basically every time you use Python for any task. Uh, but Python startup is only when we're entering an interactive session. So we can take the hit of even a couple seconds maybe if it really helps us out. Um, and the second is that it's exact and so whatever happens in Python startup is going to share the same global namespace as the shell you're about to enter. So any name bindings you do and things like that will affect your interactive uh, session. So we can, for instance, uh, always automatically apply future updates in our interactive session. Um, we can, if you want to, are always doing numerical analysis every time we open the interactive Python shell, we can just import some stuff ahead of time and they'll be ready as variable names before those first three arrows even appear in our terminal. Uh, we can change tunables about Python, things that aren't necessarily available through the command line uh, or that are, but maybe you don't control, the, uh, control them entirely. So that's kind of the end of what site does, but it's a lot, right? We've changed where, where you look for packages. We've uh, monkey patched built-ins and we've executed some arbitrary Python code. So if things are going wrong, there's kind of a lot of opportunity, a lot of places to that, that might be affecting that. So how do you track that down? Uh, well, we can run Python in verbose mode if we do, uh, many of the standard libraries that run uh, during the start with interpreter will print out some diagnostic information, including site. Um, I think it's very chatty actually, but it can uh, reveal a lot about how the interpreter is running. Uh, and if I'm having a problem specifically with import paths, I also like to use the CPython option dash X import time. Uh, this prints the time it took to import each module, which it's not really of concern to me. I've never actually had to track down a long import time before. But what it does is it also, uh, by printing out those times, tells you the real order that everything was imported. So when you start up or when you're running your own scripts, you know, you might have an import OS statement 15 times, you might import pathlib 12 times and encodings twice but only one of each of those is a real import and all the rest are cached. So if you wanna know the order that things were actually loaded out of disk, uh, this will kind of record that for you. So uh, it gets very chatty, several hundred lines just to run the site as an executable. But if we put a little filter on standard error, um, this is everything that the site module tells us about what it's doing. So it tells us where it's looking, what it's adding. Uh, and the order in which it's looking for things. So we've, maybe we found the path uh, that was getting in our way, that was giving us the wrong import or the missing import. Um, we might want to reduce how big sys.path is. Um, and there's a couple options. Again, Python path and the current working directory are not added by site, but we can still turn them off through other mechanisms. So if you just um, unset Python path, then it won't be added to sys.path. Uh, and Python dash capital P does not prepend the current working directory to your sys.path, which is a great way to remove those bugs that um, of, of module shadowing built in because it happened to be in the same 
directory you launch Python from, there was a json.py or something. Um, this is a great option, but unfortunately it is only available in 3.11 and up. Um, maybe the problem is not our import paths or our imports, but the customization. Some of this arbitrary Python is going wrong or causing bugs. Uh, we can turn off the Python startup so we don't get exact code by just unsetting that variable. Uh, if we use Python dash lower s, uh, that will turn off specifically just the user, or yes, the user customize. Uh, so we still get the site customized, we still get our sys.paths, uh, but the user import is not done, so that custom code is not run. If you use Python dash capital S, we saw earlier that turns off all of site. So this will not monkey patch built-ins. This will not add any of the site packages. It will not execute any of the arbitrary code. So you can't turn off just only site customize, but you can turn off all of site. And remember, uh, if you don't get any site packages, that means that you've essentially disabled your virtual env. So uh, you kind of can't pick and choose there. Uh, maybe you don't trust the user who's executing the Python code, or maybe the user's you and you trust yourself, but you've kind of really mucked up your environment that you're launching Python from. Uh, if you use dash capital E, you'll turn off, or Python will ignore all environment variables that are for it. So all your Python path, your Python startup, but also things that have nothing to do with site, um, they're all ignored. So Python breakpoint, Python hash seed, it doesn't, consider any of them, just use defaults. Uh, and dash i is a shortcut for ES, lowercase s. So this means it'll ignore your environment variables and specifically ignore your user customize. So you still have a chance to run a site customize. You still trust the administrator who installed the Python uh, and the packages that they installed because you still add your site packages. But if we add all this up and we just still really don't trust what Python's doing, uh, we can run what I call the safe version of Python, the safe mode in Python SIP. Um, this turns off all of site, so none of that customization, no arbitrary code running. It ignores all of your environment, so you only get defaults, uh, whatever the interpreter was built to consider the default, and you turn off the prepending of the current working directory to the beginning. So this is a pretty boring Python. Um, your sys.path is just directories that have built-ins. You have no other modules. You haven't customized it all. Your interpreter, your interactive interpreter, if you went into one, uh, is just very plain and doesn't have any charm to it. But uh, you've also eliminated a lot of possibilities for bugs. So. Sometimes we need to be safe, sometimes we need to debug, and this is a great way to do it, but I do encourage you to take these lessons and go and customize code, or the Python interpreter, because it's really just a tool for us, and we should make it productive for ourselves, and we should, beyond that, just make it so that it's a joy to use every day. Um, I've managed to amass a fairly long Python startup file, uh, and I've shared it this gist, which I know is a long string of just numbers and letters, but if you go to my GitHub, it's currently the only public gist, so it should be fairly easy to find. Um, thank you for coming out, and enjoy the end of your EuroPython. Yeah, thank you very much, Emma. Um, we have, according to the scheduled time, for questions if there's any in the room. So let's have a hand sign if there is uh, a question. And I see one, so Mike, could you please go to the mic? Uh, it's at the, in the back. <laughs> I have a question about if you use virtual amps, if you use conda environments, are there any differences in terms of location for all these things? Do you know anything about this? I don't know. I don't launch Conda environments. Um, if Conda is using site packages as its install location, um, then Conda, would... Conda uses own Conda puts site packages into site in a different for, for each environment. It creates a site packages somewhere nested down there, which is the site packages. There's no global site packages for Conda. 
Right, but if it uses a, I think, I think, I don't know Conda that well, but I think if it's using a directory called site packages, it's relying on it being found by site, yes, uh, because site packages are added differently than other directories to stop path. Mm -hmm. um, but if it's maintaining its own cache and just adding that cache to Python path or something like that, then it would be going around site. Okay, thanks. Okay, thanks a lot for the question. I see at the moment no further questions, so we're going to take the opportunity to thank you again for your talk and hope to see you again next year at EuroPython. So let's have another round of applause for Jeremiah.